Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. It is nearly 10 years since the launch of Halo 4, and we have recently found out that the main antagonist of that game, the Didact, is to return in an upcoming novel written by Kelly Gay. For fans of the Didact, Katie, I'm looking at you, and his awesome presence and history, this is very exciting news indeed. His storyline is varied and bittersweet, the depths of his character intense, and he has been shaped by millennia upon millennia of combat, victories, losses and manipulations, and while his story ended in a lacklustre way in Halo 4, and was ultimately pushed to having his story stagnate in a comic book series, this revival of his character certainly brings forward a great many questions on what his state of mind, his motivations, and even his outward appearance may be like in the upcoming book, and possibly further down the line, should we see him in-game, in due course. Well, to get a good feel for the Didact, I have put together this rather substantial video where we will cover together the entire history of the Didact in both his incarnations across the eons of time. So join me as we dive into the domain. You are what you dare. The fauna Promethean known as the Erdidact was born unto the warrior servant rate of the fauna class system with the name Shadow of Sundered Star. As a warrior servant, he was part of the rate of the foreigners responsible for military action and defense of the fauna ecumene. As with other rates, warrior servant forms were shaped based on qualities deemed most useful in their role. To best suit fighting and warfare, warriors were significantly more physically built and more powerful and resilient than the other rates. While it was rarely necessary to engage in close quarters combat in actual warfare, warriors still possessed remarkable physical strength. This was all to come for the young Manipular. As a Manipular, he would have studied the warrior servant's rate, their traditions, military doctrine, naval and combat strategies, and become immensely skilled and well-versed in the particulars of war in defense of the mantle of responsibility, all whilst maintaining the basic physical form of a young or juvenile foreigner. He was taught and trained by the legendary Promethean known as Bitterness of the Vanquished, as one of the oldest foreigners alive at the time, her experience and expertise in combat and war was of near unequalled prestige. Having led warrior servant forces during a period of fauna civil war, long predating the fauna's conflict with ancient humanity or the Flood, collectively known as the Cradal Conflicts. Receiving training from such an experienced warrior boded well for Shadow's future warrior servant service, setting him up for a great many successes in the centuries and millennia to come. Mentor and sponsor, from my life let the best be taken. As a cadet, Shadow of Sundered Star served upon the Fauna Fortress class ship Deep Reverence under the tutelage of the Confirmer whom, over the years, he developed a close friendship with. Shadow's rise to a fully-fledged warrior servant came about, as with most warrior servants, as a consequence of what is known as a brevet mutation. A big aspect of fauna culture was the way in which they refined themselves to be more fitting to a particular purpose within their societal structure. This was achieved by a process called mutation. Mutation was a fauna term referring to the customized biological maturation to new forms or rates entailing a carefully adjusted combination of genetic engineering, gene therapy, and biochemical manipulation. 
A foreigner's mutation determined the individual's place within their family, maniple, guild and society overall. The process was typically performed between two to five times over the course of a lifetime, and typically a mutation was slow and a gradual process, with the changes appearing over a period of several years, and was generally patterned after a family member. Brevet mutation was a term used to refer to the undertaking of a risky ad hoc mutation that carried higher risk of complication. This type of mutation was typically performed by warrior servants during wartime. Shadow received a brevet mutation from his friend and mentor, the Confirmer, a much older foreigner Promethean from the warrior servant rate, and the commander of the fortress class vessel Deep Reverence, which would eventually come to maintain the quarantine of the San Shayum homeworld of Janjur Kom. This brevet mutation was the mental imprint and memories of the Confirmer, a mature warrior servant, onto the relatively blank slate of Shadow's pre-existing consciousness. As this brevet mutation took root, Shadow gained understanding and comprehension of the Confirmer's immense combat knowledge, and made the move to the College of Strategic Defense of the Mantle to teach this immense knowledge to upcoming warrior servants, to better prepare and instruct the next generation of warriors with the supreme knowledge of the Confirmer. It was at the War College that Shadow of Sundered Star gained his title as the Didact. The title was bestowed upon him by his students who found him to be a strict and demanding teacher. The term Didact itself means to instruct or teach. Whilst not much is known of the Didact's career around this time, what is known is that he quickly moved through the ranks of the warrior servants and achieved the position of Protector of the Ecumene, the supreme commander of all military forces of the Fauna Ecumene, a title that he would hold for 12,000 years. During his service, the Didact would begin a romantic relationship with another Promethean commander within the warrior servants, Endurance of Will, a powerful Promethean in her own right, and having received her brevet mutation from the Didact's teacher, Bitterness of the Vanquished, the two shared a history that ran deep. This relationship seemed on course to become a marriage, that is, of course, before the Didact met the Life Worker, First Light Weaves Living Song, the Librarian. They met on Charam Hakor, and in spite of the expectation to marry within one's own rate, Didact chose to marry the Librarian, and settled on the warrior servant world of Numdagro, in a mansion designed by the Didact himself in the age-old aesthetic of traditional warrior servant architecture, where they would raise several children, all of which would follow in Didact's footsteps and become warrior servants. The relative peace that had befallen the Faunas for many thousands of years was soon to end. Humanity, an advanced and combative cohabiting species of the galaxy, had begun aggressively expanding into Fauna territory. For long had humanity held the foreigner's dominion over the galaxy and involvement in the affairs of other species in contempt. Humanity's previous approach to the foreigner empire was to avoid it at all costs, even going so far as to expand their ever-growing empire away from foreigner-controlled space, building an empire of 20,000 worlds across a thousand systems, and allied with dozens of other species including the immensely intelligent San Shayum, with whom they developed technology that easily rivaled that of the foreigners in all but scale. Didact himself viewed humanity's military as the second greatest superpower in the galaxy and stood as a significant threat and rival to the foreigners' sphere of influence. The recent aggressive expansion into foreigner territory was looked upon as the arrogance and power of humanity finally boiling over to a flashpoint where all-out conflict between the two species was all but certain. The Didact viewed this rise as the actions of a contentious, bigoted, self-centered species that posed a significant threat to the Fauna Ecumene and the mantle 
of responsibility. The foreigners were sworn to uphold and protect. This resulted in the foreigners going to war with humanity, a war that would last for over a thousand years. In many engagements, foreign forces were held at bay for prolonged periods of time by human resistance. Even in situations involving overwhelming numerical superiority, human forces mustered an aggression and tactical capability that saw many pitched battles stretch out over dozens, sometimes hundreds of years. Unbeknownst to the Didact and the Fauna Empire, humanity were in fact fighting a war on two fronts. Their initial incursion into Fauna-controlled space was because they were fleeing from the growing flood infestation of the galaxy. They had discovered a powdered biological matter aboard transport vessels of unknown origin. This powder, when given to domesticated animals, added to desirable characteristics. However, over time, this changed into mutations, and when these mutations made the jump from the domesticated animals over to humanity itself, the infection rapidly spiralled out of control. Many of the foreigner worlds that were cleansed entirely with orbital bombardment by humanity were not done so as direct acts of war, but as a firebreak strategy, as they found many foreigner worlds were also infected by the flood. In the absence of this knowledge, the foreigners continued to press on humanity, who in spite of overwhelming odds, were holding their own between a rock and a hard place. The only thing that ultimately prevented humanity from prevailing over both the Flood and the Foreigners, simultaneously, fell simply to a numbers game. They could fight on equal footing with the Foreigners, matching their military might and lethal force blow for blow, and were making impressive headway against the Flood, pushing the Flood forces back. In a costly strategic manoeuvre, humanity had lost a third of its total population and a large portion of the military capabilities, but had also seemingly caused the Flood to retreat and recede to the periphery of the galaxy, thereby enabling humanity to dedicate more forces to the war with the Foreigners. At this point, however, the Foreigners had gained too much ground and a strategic edge, and the Didact's forces pushed humanity back to their capital. It was at this time that some of the Didact's forces first encountered the Flood, resulting in infection of hundreds of their battle fleets. Once the true threat of the Flood was understood, the Foreigners adjusted their tactics and instead opted for extermination and were able to defeat the Flood infections they found. A few specimens were captured and stored for further study. In the final standoff, humanity's military was pushed back to Charam Hakor, and the Didact's forces, under his direct command, had successfully cut off the world from other human colonies. With no hope of resupply or reinforcement, humanity's forces, led by 4th Hensho Oberun, the Lord of Admirals, prepared for their last stand. They incorporated precursor artifacts into their own technology to bolster their defence, and settled in for a lasting defence. Despite the Didact having the entire Fauna military at his disposal, it took immense tactical and strategic capability. Untold levels of power and effort, a total of 53 years, and cost the Didact every last one of his children, whom had been fighting under his command to overcome humanity's last stronghold. Didact's forces finally took Charam Hakor in the face of inevitable defeat, humanity's forces finally relented, many committing suicide rather than being captured, and the final 7,000 warriors led by the Lord of Admirals stripped their uniforms so they could not be identified. Nevertheless, when the Didact strode into their midst, he immediately recognised his adversary, a human whom he had learned to respect, even admire. The human forces were put into stasis fields and prepared to be composed. The flood threat was now understood to be significant enough to be studied, and humanity, at least to the knowledge of the foreigners, had managed to defeat it. 
the secret as to how they managed this had to be understood. Each human was interrogated for information and then composed, their essences to be studied and implanted into future generations of humans so that perhaps one day humanity's solution could be found, understood and wielded by the foreigners should the flood return. It was in these final moments the didact spoke quietly with the Lord of Admirals. My finest opponent, the mantle accepts all who live fiercely, who defend their young, who build and struggle and to grow, and even those who dominate, as humans have dominated, cruelly and without wisdom. But to all of us, there is a time like this, when the Domain seeks to confirm our essences. And for you, that time is now. Know this, relentless enemy, killer of our children, Lord of Admirals. Soon we will face the enemy you have faced and defeated. I can see that challenge coming to the foreigners, and so do many others. And we are afraid. That is why you and many thousands of your people who may contain knowledge of how humans defended themselves against the Flood will not pass cleanly and forever as I would wish for a fellow warrior, but will be extracted and steeped down into the genetic code of many new humans. This is not my wish nor my will. It rises from the skill and the will of my life mate, my wife, the librarian, who sees much farther than I do down the twining streams of living time. So this additional indignity will be inflicted upon you. It means, I believe, that humans will not end here, but may rise again, fight again. Humans are always warriors. But what and whom will they fight I do not know, for I fear the time of the foreigners is drawing to a close. In this, the librarian and I find agreement. Take satisfaction, warrior, in that possibility. Following this, the Didact and some of his Prometheans gained access to a secured vault within Charam Hakor, within which was a massive being. The other Prometheans secured the area while the Didact went to confront it in person. The being claimed itself to be the last precursor, and divulged information to the Didact that revealed that the foreigners had lashed out and killed their creators, the precursors, many millions of years prior. Understanding the potential implications of this information being highly destructive to the Foreigner's Empire, the Didact chose to keep this information to himself and left the creature in its time lock. In the years that followed, humanity were devolved back to hunter-gatherer status and returned to their homeworld. Studies were conducted on the flood specimens, infected hosts, and the essences of the composed humans, and it was from this that the life workers, led by the life shaper, the didact's wife, librarian, made such revelations about the true nature of the flood and the actual intentions of the humans in the earliest days of the war. With this knowledge, the didact returned to the Fauna Ecumene and advised on an approach of vigilance and study in the event of a return of the Flood, and with it proposed a measure of protecting the foreigners from such an event, in the form of shield worlds, 
that would be constructed and distributed across fauna controlled space. These bastions of safety would protect the Ecumene and its people, while allowing the Faunus to continue to grow and thrive and protect the mantle, while also avoiding unnecessary conflict. The leader of the Builderate of the Faunus, Faber of Will and Might, known as the Master Builder, instead posited that the Faunus should create super weapons to deal with the Flood instead. The Didact ultimately viewed this as a violation of their charge as holders of the mantle, and an affront to the mantle itself. The Didact was successful in delaying the plans to build the Halos for several thousand years, granting them the time to begin constructing several shield worlds, but eventually, the Master Builder convinced the Ecumen Council to sanction his plans. Didact was ruled against and forced to stop the ongoing construction of the shield worlds and ultimately submit to the master builder's authority. Didact refused and was ultimately stripped of his rank, titles and power and forced into exile. Didact was forced to enter a cryptum and into a meditative hibernation within the embrace of the domain. His wife, the librarian, had his cryptum moved to humanity's homeworld and hidden from the master builder and his allies. The librarian would then be able to carry out plans of her own, safe in the knowledge that her husband was safe and hidden on earth. And there he would remain, guarded by war sphinxes containing the essences of his children for over a thousand years. A young manipular by the name of Bornsteller makes eternal lasting, born of the Builder Rate, whom had journeyed to the human homeworld and acquired the assistance of two humans, Chakas and Ryza, to guide him to what he believed were precursor relics. In truth, they would lead him to Jamonkin Crater, and to a fauna cryptum within which the Didact resided in exile. The influence of the Didact's wife was evidently at work as Bornstella felt the influence of a synchron, a term used to describe theoretical fixed points in time through which great forces were all connected together. The closest analogue in human society would be a profound déjà vu, as if the events unfolding in front of you were predetermined yet unexpected, familiar yet novel. Upon unlocking the cryptum, the Didact's form was revealed to Bornstella, whom assisted the Didact back to strength. His awakening had not gone unnoticed, however, and had attracted a fleet of foreigner ships loyal to the master builder, Faber. They were unable to pinpoint his exact location due to the area being hidden and occluded by a baffler which cloaked the crater's central region. Didact then created a ship from a design seed left by his wife, and left Earth for Charum Hakor, with Born Stella, the two humans, and his war sphinxes in tow. Upon arriving at Charum Hakor, it was immediately obvious that the Master Builder had already tested a halo, and rendered the planet, and in truth the system, devoid of life. Moreover, the precursor construct that had once ordained the planet and the wider system had also been destroyed. Didact knew this did not bode well, and immediately set down upon the planet to find that the ancient being known as the Primordial had escaped its time lock. Brought on by their presence on the capital world of the now devolved human empire, the two humans, Chakas and Ryza, had memories swell up within them, memories attached to their gene songs that the librarian had implanted. Didact recognised this and was aware then that his wife was evidently orchestrating events from afar in a way that only she would be capable of. So, eager to follow her intended path and unlock more of these genetic memories, the Didact made way for the homeworld of humanity's ancient allies, the San Shayum. You weren't prepared to mutate either, were you? In combat, mutation was forced on you. A, a brevet mutation. Someone saw your potential even through your flaws. Touched by your blade, Manipular. 
During the journey between Charum Hakor and Janjur Kum, the didact took the young manipula Born Stella aside, and to grant him access to the domain, offered a brevet mutation. Born Stella took this opportunity and in so doing accepted a consciousness imprint and the memories and knowledge of the didact himself, potentially allowing Born Stella to continue the didact's work should he ever be captured or killed. When they arrived in the Sanshayam system, the didact met with his old friend and mentor, the Confirmer, aboard the Deep Reverence. The ship and its commander had been stationed here to quarantine the system, but also as something of a punishment and to keep him out of the way while the Master Builder and his growing influence continued to dominate the Ecumene Council. The didact requested access to the Sanshayam homeworld, which the Confirmer granted. However, upon approaching the planet, the didact ship was intercepted by the Master Builder's forces and his ship was dismantled around him. He, Born Stella and the two humans were captured and interrogated. When the didact refused to give information pertaining to the shield worlds or control codes for the most powerful contender class and sillas of the foreigner Ecumene, the Master Builder decided to seal him and other foreigner warrior servants within stasis bubbles within a derelict ship and leave them for dead in a flood-controlled system known as a burn. But the didact was not so easily dismissed. Born Stella was returned to his family and was summoned thereafter to the capital of Maithrillion to testify in the trial of the Master Builder for murder and crimes against the mantle. The trial, however, was interrupted by the contender class AI Mendicant Bias, whom openly attacked the capital and seized control of the halos that were gathered there. During this battle, the consciousness of the didact locked within Born Stella awoke, and took control of Born Stella, allowing him to escape Mendicant's control and escape Maithrillion for the greater arc, with glory of a far dawn and splendid dust of ancient suns. Maithrillion, the Fauna capital, the Ecumene Council, and innumerable Fauna's perished in the fall of Maithrillion as a result of the now rampant mendicant bias firing Installation 07 in close proximity to the capital, thereby sterilizing the system. And the battle that ensued during these events destroyed 10 of the 12 halos of the senescent array. Only Omega Halo was successfully recalled to the Greater Arc, and Zeta Halo was once again lost. Upon reaching the Greater Arc, Bornstella met with the Librarian, who told Bornstella that the Didact had been murdered by the Master Builder, since Didact's sheer expertise and experience was essential to the impending threat of the Flood, it was at this instance that the consciousness imprint of the Didact took full control of Bornstella, effectively becoming a second incarnation of the Didact that would come to be known as Isodidact, and stated he would return control to Bornstella once his work was complete. Intent on fighting his human friends, Chakas and Ryza, and stopping Mendicant Bias, whom had been compromised by the Primordial, the Isodidact tracked the location of Zeta Halo, or Installation 07, and intercepted the Halo and overwrote Mendicant Bias with control codes, saving the Halo from a collision with a planet, and with it, all the research data gleaned from the Flood. The halo was reduced from its original 30,000 km diameter to the smaller 10,000 km diameter of the newer Neoteric Halo Installation Array, as per the order of the Isodidact, whom had now assumed all the previous titles, ranks, and power of the original didact. Chakas was mortally injured during these events, so Isodidact had his consciousness preserved and gave him new life as 343 Guilty Spark. Isodidact then interrogated the Primordial, who had been once again locked within a time lock. The Primordial revealed its true nature, its connection to the Flood and to the Precursors, and the truth that there was no cure to the Flood, and that the Fauners were never meant to be the inheritors of the Mantle. This enraged the Isodidact, so much so that he set the Primordial's time lock 
in a fast forward state, forcing it to experience billions of years of entropy in seconds. The being decayed in front of his eyes and became naught but dust. Over the following years, Isodidact's power continued to grow and he gained the favour of the new Ecumene Council. Consideration of the Didact shield worlds was once again pursued, holding off the use of the Neoteric Halo Array for a time, until of course the inevitable progress of the Flood forced even the Isodidact to reconsider their use. Isodidact would travel with the Librarian and her lifeworkers for many, many years, ensuring their security as they desperately catalogued and indexed the sentient species of the galaxy in a conservation measure to preserve life in the event the Halos were fired. They visited countless worlds, including humanity's homeworld. When the Flood arrived in the sector, it prompted the Isodidact to return to the core of the Ecumene and assume command of the Orion Complex Defense Operations, where he would lead battles against the Flood. He would periodically commune with the Librarian via transmission exchanges, where he would desperately try to convince the Librarian to abandon her conservation measure and return to the relative safety of the Core Worlds behind the Maginot Line, but to no avail. Not an interview, a deep, burning brand, an upwelling of hidden genetic contents, so many things I would never have imagined, things I cannot repeat, lest I lose what remains of my sanity, my warrior soul. All the while, deep within a flood-infested system, the original Didact, now known as the Erdidact, was released from his stasis field within the derelict Forna ship due to a power failure. He found himself within the husk of a barely functional Forna vessel without weapons and without armour. He soon came across a Promethean named Sharp by Striking whom once served under the Didact as a warrior servant, but had since become Builder Security. True of many warrior servants after the Didact's exile on Earth. Upon exploring the ship, the pair found two more foreigners in stasis fields, Maker of Moons, a Builder, and Catalog, a member of the Juridicals. Having released them from their stasis by brute force alone, following a brief exchange, they moved to the bridge to assess their location. They were approaching a planet called Ulthera Midgard, which was flood infected. They were approached by a mass of precursor star roads that had bundled together. Maker and Sharp would attempt to flee while Didact and Catalog confronted the approaching mass. Didact and Catalog were captured by an approaching flood fleet and this was where the Didact was confronted by a grave mind, the singular intellect and commanding compound mind of the Flood. Didact quickly identified it was the same being, or at least the same intelligence, that he himself had interrogated on Chatham Hakor 10,000 years before. The grave mind subjected the Didact's mind to all manner of torments which shook him to his very core. Described as more malediction than conversation, Didact's sanity, morality, rationale, and logical strategic thinking were damaged, likely beyond repair, by this encounter, ultimately infiltrating his mind and causing the biological equivalent of the logic plague that had claimed a mendicant bias before him. Didact was ultimately sent away following this extended encounter, unknowingly a pawn in the Gravemind strategy. He was soon found by the Master Builder, whom he delivered a message of suffering and anguish experienced by his family, whom had been absorbed by the Flood. The Master Builder returned the Didact to the core of the Ecumene, where both were arrested and interrogated. The Didact was forced to retell 
his encounter with the Gravemind, which again caused further damage to his already tentative sanity. Nevertheless, the Didact's original privileges were restored, although the Isodidact remained in command of the foreigner military. It was more merely a formality, and Didact ultimately returned to Requiem to strategize other solutions to the Flood, as every strategy he had to that point was now likely known by the Flood intelligence. He trialled dozens of other strategies, even going so far as to mutate and augment himself to see if he could develop a Flood immunity, but alas, they all failed. And this procedure left him significantly mutated from his original appearance. After much research, he acquired a composer, a device that could convert biological forms into digital essences that could then be used to develop machines. These machines, he came to call Promethean Knights, were platforms of war and implements of combat that composed minds could occupy and control, combating the Flood without falling victim to their infestations. Didact's Promethean forces fully agreed to be composed and united with these powerful war machines. After scoring an isolated victory, it became apparent there just simply wasn't enough of them, and as such, forced the Didact to consider alternatives to boost the available numbers. Don't you see the truth of it? We gave the Precursors reason to retreat into madness a passion for vengeance. And the Grave Mind gave it all right back to me. I am filled with that passion, that madness, that poison. If we fire Halo, we lose everything. Four years following his return, a meeting took place between the Erdidact, the Librarian, and the Isodidact within the family mansion on Nomdagro. The meeting did not go well, and Erdidact argued with both his wife and the Isodidact regarding the Isodidact's actions. He came to the nonsensical conclusion that the Isodidact was endangering the foreigners and that the Flood had retreated through favour of humanity, a trait that the Librarian shared, in his mind, making them equally culpable in the inevitable fall of the Foreigners. He left to languish alone in a desolate region of the planet and was soon joined by his younger incarnation, the Isodidact. Their exchange demonstrably outlined how different the two incarnations of the Didact had become, with the Erdidact seeing only fault with the Isodidact's actions, and the Isodidact coming to the ever more obvious conclusion that the Halos were seemingly the only viable option left to combat the Flood. Before their argument could escalate to physical violence, a Flood incursion was detected approaching the planet. They immediately evacuated with the Librarian and Isodidact leaving for the Greater Ark, and the Erdidact following in his flagship, Mantle's approach. At the Greater Ark, the Erdidact remained on his ship and refused to leave to attend the foreigner commander's emergency conference. Unbeknownst to him at the time, an argument had actually arisen in the conference that since the original Didact had returned, the Isodidact was no longer necessary. The Isodidact found an unexpected ally in the Master Builder who managed to convince the others that the Erdidact was no longer fit for duty, as his encounter with the Gravemind had left him corrupted, and as a tool for the Flood to cause strife within the Ecuvine. Even directly referencing that the Gravemind had sent him back with a message taunting the Master Builder about his wife and children's suffering as they were incorporated into the Gravemind. Events which were soon to follow demonstrated this to be the truth. Though briefly visited by his wife, Librarian, she was further horrified by what he had ultimately become. The Greater Ark soon fell under siege by the Flood, and in the chaos that followed, the Erdidact, supported by thousands of Sentinels under his control, took his ship to the nearby Omega Halo and composed the remaining human population of the Ring to turn into Promethean Knights. 
The librarian tried desperately to stop him but was simply shunned aside, after which he left and returned to Requiem. The siege between the Flood and the Greater Ark continued in his absence. The Isodidact, the Master Builder, the Examiner, and Didact's old mentor, Bitterness of the Vanquished, travelled to Omega Halo, which they planned to use to clear a path through the Star Ropes that were closing on the Greater Ark. Master Builder gave the coordinates of the Lesser Ark, Installation 00, to the Isodidact and stayed behind to fire Omega Halo to clear a momentary path to safety. As the Star Roads closed in and began ripping Omega Halo and the Greater Ark apart, 343 Guilty Spark took Isodidact aboard a Gargantua-class transport and escaped, leaving via the Master Builder's personal slipspace portal to prepare the Foreigner's last resort. The Librarian, devastated by the actions of the Erdidact and the loss of her humans, followed her husband to Requiem. There she encountered Endurance of Will, the Didact's former lover, whom now served as his top lieutenant, and was the only Promethean who had not yet been composed. Although Endurance seemed in support of the Erdidact's actions, it was obvious to them both that she knew the Didact had gone too far. Endurance eventually agreed with the Librarian that he was no longer fit to lead the Prometheans and should be exiled within a cryptum. Librarian would confront her husband within Mandel's approach, and after a brief exchange, she would overpower him by force and seal him within a war cryptum. The war cryptum would connect with the Domain, and he would spend the ages in peace within the Domain. And when awakened, however many millennia into the future, his mind would be healed and he could help humanity attain the mantle and ascend to become the new caretakers of the galaxy in the Foreigner's absence. She soon learned the Domain was based on neural physics and as such the firing of the Halos would destroy the Domain as well. And thus, her husband's meditation in the embrace of the Domain would be shattered and he would spend the ages in silence, alone with his madness and rage. By the time this revelation presented itself, the remaining foreigners were already at Installation 00, preparing to fire the array. So, the librarian made her way to Earth, to draw the Flood's attention, and to buy them the time they needed. No. Old friend, we have the most important job in history, perhaps in all time. You may very well outlast all of us here. You may see the new galaxy emerge. Tell me, Chakas, if this was your choice, after all we have seen and survived, will you fire the rings? Now at Installation 00, the Isodidact and the remaining Foreigners immediately began preparing for firing the Halo Array. Isodidact assigned the monitors to their respective installations, including assigning 343 Guilty Spark to Installation 04. He then deployed the Halos across the galaxy and instructed Offensive Bias to stall Mendicum Pius and the approaching Flood Fleet so that the Halos could be fired. In the final moments, the Isodidact exchanged messages with the Librarian and learned she had knowingly and willingly stranded herself on Earth as a distraction. The Isodidact prepared a rescue party to depart and collect her from Earth, however Mendicant Bias breached the Maginot Line and destroyed them before they could depart. In a final bitter curse, he asked forgiveness and activated the array. The halos fired perfectly and sterilized all life in the galaxy. A 
offensive bias defeated mendicant bias in the few minutes following the firing of the array. Isodidact, the few remaining foreigners and the indexed species whom had been safely stored aboard the Ark, outside of the array's range, were now the only sentient life of the galaxy. Isodidact presided over the trial of Mendicant Bias, whom he ultimately entombed, stored away on the Ark with only one thought, atonement. He spent some time with Ryza and his people as they celebrated this new era of the galaxy. The new life shaper and librarian successor, Chant to Green, observed the celebrations from a distance and accompanied the humans on their resettlement on their home world. He told Ryza the time of the foreigners had come to its end and that they would no longer involve themselves in the affairs of others and exile themselves beyond the galaxy in penance for their failures. Although both hoped that one day their descendants may meet and be as brothers. After leaving Earth, Bornsteller and the remaining foreigners, whom had now shed their titles, returned to the task of reseeding life in the galaxy. This task took several centuries to complete. During this time, a romantic relationship began between Bornsteller and Chance to Green. While completing the receding with the San Shayum, Bornsteller recalled a final message from the librarian, suggesting that the domain wasn't destroyed and could potentially be restarted. He appealed to the others to accompany him on this final task, which they expressed reluctance, but ultimately agreed. They travelled to Maithrillion to find the mythological Organon, the original seed of the domain, and repair it. When they arrived, they were confronted by a precursor entity known as Obadan, which was in fact the precursor equivalent of an AI or Ancilla, but immensely more sophisticated. Abaddon was known only to the highest ranked forerunners, and had helped ancient forerunners access the domain. Over the millennia, knowledge was suppressed and the name was corrupted to Organon. Abaddon sought to judge the forerunners for their immense failure of the mantle. Bornsteller and the others made their way to the physical location of Abaddon, deep within the Mysterium and attempted to interact with the housing containing the precursor Ancilla. Abaddon vaporized two of the foreigners and attempted to immobilize the others by locking their armor. However, growth through trial of change managed to insert a deadbolt key into Abaddon's housing, sacrificing herself to serve as the template for the restored domain. This act caused Abaddon to disappear and Bornsteller and the survivors were able to leave Maithrillion uninhindered, while the domain began to heal. With their work complete, Bornstella and the remaining foreigners maintained their promise and exiled themselves beyond the galaxy. They travelled to Path Cathona, the large Magellanic Cloud, a small satellite galaxy of the Milky Way. There, they lived simple lives on a distant world, where Bornstella would continue his relationship with Chanter Green and eventually have a son together. It is assumed Bornstella and the isodidact within him have long since passed away. One hundred thousand years would pass, the galaxy would recover, and an ancient evil would awaken. So fades the great harvest of my betrayer. In 2557, the Erdidact was awoken from his maddening exile within his cryptum and immediately confronted with his Promethean Knights under his wife's influence, a conglomerate of primitive beings, and a human warrior. He wasted no time in chastising the human, whom just so happened to be humanity's greatest warrior in over a hundred thousand years, and at a point where humanity were rapidly approaching a stage that they could finally take the mantle of responsibility, something he fully intended to prevent. 
After tossing the Spartan aside, he fled Requiem's core via a slipspace portal. He allowed Jul Umdama's Covenant to join forces with his Prometheans simply to bolster forces and help deal with the human presence on his shield world, in spite of regarding them as primitives. The Didact quickly made preparations to leave Requiem and prevent humanity from attaining the mantle, thereby ensuring foreigner ascendancy. The human supercarrier, the Infinity, opted not to assist the Spartan in stopping the Didact before he reached his full strength and immediately departed Requiem, leaving the Spartan alone to fight the Didact. Before the Spartan could stop him, the Didact completed his preparations and departed Requiem on board his massive flagship, the Mantle's Approach, and made course for Installation 03 where he knew he could find the Composer. After scanning the area, Didact pinpointed its location within a human research outpost in an asteroid field. He effortlessly tore the outpost apart and withdrew the Composer from the facility and immediately turned it on the resident human populace. All but the Spartan were composed and added to his growing force of Promethean Knights. In spite of consistent disruptions, Didact had become impressed by the Spartan's capabilities, battle prowess, even coming to respect him, but this did not change his goals. The Didact left for Earth, pursued again by the Spartan. When he arrived, humanity were waiting and struck back as best they could. Nevertheless, the Didact activated the Composer again and attacked the city of New Phoenix, composing nearly the entire population of the city. Finally, the Spartan found his way to the Didact's location and the two confronted each other on a light bridge above a slipspace rift to the Composer's Abyss, where digitized essences would be sent for storage. The Didact once again physically dominated the Spartan due to his armor's immense capabilities, but was briefly restrained by the Spartan's AI companion Cortana, giving the Spartan the opportunity to lunge for the Promethean and lodge a grenade in his chest. The grenade detonated, and sent the Didact falling into the slipspace void below. Didact had in fact survived his fall through the slipspace fissure. His self-experiments and mutations that he performed to attempt immunity to the flood also made him immune to the effects of the composer. He landed on Installation 03 and was discovered by another group of Spartans, Spartan Black Team, whom he swiftly and deftly executed. He was greeted by the monitor of the Composer's Forge, 859 Static Carillon. The Didact asked to be taken to the Composer's Forge, where he established a base and requested a damaged halo that he could repair and use against the humans. The monitor agreed on the condition the Didact did not bring Promethean Knights to the Composer's Forge, as he considered them abominations. The following day, the Spartan known as Master Chief arrived with Blue Team, and when they and the Didact confronted each other, a conflict erupted. Static Carillon had upheld his end of the bargain and transported Installation 03 above the Composer's Forge, but when the Didact summoned Promethean Knights to fight the Spartans, Static Carillon chose to assist the Spartans. Didact escaped through a portal to Installation 03 and took a Composer with him to ultimately use the Halo against humanity. The Spartans, assisted by the Monitor, followed in close pursuit to Installation 03, where another battle began, and as Didact vied to kill the Master Chief, crushing his helmet, Blue Team attempted to stop him but were subdued. At this point, the Monitor attacked the Didact and transported him to Halo's control room. Master Chief arrived moments later with the Installation's activation index and confronted the Didact, explaining that since he couldn't be killed by conventional means, he'd try a different approach. The Didact was confused when the Spartan inserted the activation index into the core, asking why he'd fire a halo just to stop him. The Spartan informed him he didn't activate the halo, he had disabled its safety protocols, thereby enabling the monitor to eject the portion of the ring containing the control room towards the Composer's Forge. The monitor then rescued the Spartan and left the Didact to plummet to the Composer's Forge where he was subjected to the combined effects of several composers simultaneously, which proved sufficient to disintegrate his body 
and store his essence in digital form. As of 2558, Didact is considered contained, not dead, and it is known that his essence seemingly found its way to the now open and recovered domain, where he became imprisoned and was spending time reflecting on memories of his wife the librarian. Seemingly, the Didact had finally found his peace. And now, the future of the Didact. It has now been confirmed that the Didact is to return in an upcoming novel by Kelly Gay. I will be reading with interest and will report any and all new emergent lore pertinent to this subject at an appropriate time thereafter. Personally, since it seems that he's finally been given the opportunity to heal within the domain and reflect on his memories of his wife, it would be good to see the Didact return in a redemption story arc in the future instalments of perhaps Halo Infinite campaigns. We already have suggested emergent lore of the arrival of Offensive Bias in the Halo games at the close of Halo Infinite. Personally, if Offensive Bias is coming, I'd be interested in seeing a storyline where Offensive Bias doesn't look upon humanity with the favour that Mendicant Bias has since the Terminals in Halo 3, and instead look upon them as a species getting in the way of his charge, of researching and understanding the Endless. Perhaps a conflict between Offensive Bias and humanity could take place, and we could have a scene where Chief is ambushed by Offensive Bias, and, due to his immense power as a contender class Ancilla, has Chief immobilised and basically at the mercy of Offensive Bias. And as he slowly approaches the Chief to end his life, right as it's about to happen, the Didact, in a revived form supported by the Domain, exits a slipspace rift between Chief and Offensive, and utters a shutdown phrase overwriting offensive bias and saving Chief's life, and from there, the two could go about dealing with the Endless in whatever form they may take in the future. For now, that's just a pipe dream and wild speculation, but stay tuned for the inevitable lore drop coming on the Didact. And until then... Thanks for watching, stick your comments down below, and I look forward to what you have to say. And quick shout outs and thank yous to my patrons, Spartan10148, my devastatingly effective Metarch class Ancilla. Silver Spartan, Leon, Ram, Prophet Bear, and Irrefutable Justice, my ever vigilant monitors. The careful tending of Alvin, Andrew, Brian, Cameron, Darian, Devon, Phantom, Flaming Halo, Cabal, Legions Lost, Michael, Spartan0137, The Cave Potato, and Wolf Eclipse, my sub monitors. My growing fleet of Strato Sentinels and my most loyal of enforcers, and all my awesome sentinels, sentries, and constructors who have jumped aboard on Patreon to help support the channel. You have my debt of gratitude. And, as ever, Todd Morrison, my Tier Zero Transcentient YouTube member. Thanks for keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, as it all helps the channel grow and helps me to continue to deliver this kind of content for you guys. And if you're ready for your next steps in evolution, head over to Patreon and become a patron there, or become a YouTube member to attain a higher state of being. Much love to all of you, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.